welcome to raw online program so today we'll see on iron toxicity we'll start with the first question how much elemental iron does prenatal vitamin tablet contain it is around 65 mg so how much elemental iron does children's chewable multivitamin tablet contain it is around 10 to 18 mg and now what is the toxic dose of iron it is 10 to 20 mg per kg of elemental iron so with this background let us see the absorption of iron absorption of iron salts happens at the level of duodenum it is determined by the iron requirements of the body iron absorption in otherwise normal individual is around 10 to 35 percentage of what we consume orally but in case of iron deficiency it's up to 80 to 95 percentage of the iron which is consumed is being absorbed. The body cannot excrete iron directly. Rather, it regulates by the gastrointestinal absorption. I mean, after uptake into the intestinal mucosal cells, either the iron is being stored as ferritin in the epithelial cells of intestine and lost when the cell is sloughed off or in case of iron deficiency this ferritin is getting transferred into the blood into the systemic circulation and the iron is transferred towards the ferritin ferritin is the serum iron binding protein in overdose states the oxidative effects the harmful effects of the iron acts on the gastrointestinal mucosal cells leading to the dysfunction of this regulatory balance. Thus, a passive absorption of iron occurs across this intestinal walls that increases down its concentration gradient. So, more you consume, the more will be the absorption. The regulatory balance is lost. After the transferrin is saturated, the free iron or the non-transferrin bound iron gets distributed to various organ systems. It gets deposited right from the thyroid, right from the pituitary, right from lungs, to the heart, even to the kidneys and the liver. And that starts the oxidative damages. It is for reasons not clearly known, the non-ionic forms of the iron is actually less toxic. These non-ionic forms are carbonyl ion and iron polysaccharide. So these are the common iron formulations and their elemental iron content. Ferrous chloride contains around 28% of elemental iron. Ferrous fumarate contains around 33%. Ferrous gluconate contains around 12%. And less is going to be the ferrous lactate and ferrous sulfate, which contains 19 and around 20% of elemental iron. As I mentioned, the non-ionic compounds, the carbonyl ion and the polysaccharide ion contains around 98 percentage of elemental iron and 46 percentage of elemental iron respectively. Though these contains high degree, high percentage of elemental iron, the toxicity is actually less. Now we are used to this parental iron therapy, that is the ferric carboxymaltose, which contains 5 percentage of elemental iron, ferric gluconate, which contains around 1.25 percentage of elemental iron, Ferrumoxitol contains 3% of elemental iron. Iron dextran, this is a low molecular weight substance. There is one more substance with high molecular weight dextran, which we are not using it right now. And iron dextran, low molecular weight contains around 5% of elemental iron. And iron sucrose contains around 2% of elemental iron. Initially, when we identified anemia could be because of iron deficiency, parenteral iron was started. Whatever iron was introduced into the body gets rapidly redistributed to all the organ systems and it was causing more toxic effects than being beneficial. It is thus we need a stabilizer for the iron inside the systemic circulation. Thus we introduce dextran compound along with the iron. So dextran acted as a stabilizer for the iron thereby iron binding to other tissues were decreased. But this iron dextran combination has 
lot of anaphylactic reactions inside the body. So this iron and dextrin, I mean to say the high molecular weight dextrin compound was withheld and introduced as low molecular weight dextrins. The systemic toxicity of this dextrin compound was significantly reduced by introduction of this low molecular weight dextrin, but still it was in the high numbers. It is when thus iron sucrose compound was introduced and the anaphylactic reactions due to the iron sucrose is almost negligible. Coming to the pathophysiology. In pathophysiology, we need to look into this tissue injury, acidosis and the shock. Let's go through one by one. Iron participates in oxidation reduction reactions, we call it as redox reactions. It catalyzes the generation of hydroxyl ions intracellularly by the Fenton reaction and haber weiss cycle. Thus, the reactive oxidant species oxidizes membrane-bound lipids and causes loss of cellular integrity and tissue injury. So once this iron compound binds to the tissues of the body, it starts a reactive oxygen species injury to all these tissues. Once the membrane lipids is lost, the entire cell regulatory cycle itself is lost and the tissue death progresses, basically an oxidative cycle, acidosis. Iron disrupts mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. Thus, the subsequent buildup of unused ions happens. These hydrogen ions are supposed to be incorporated into the ATP molecules. If these are not incorporated into ATP, this unused hydrogen ions leads to metabolic acidosis. This is one mechanism. And the ferrous iron, whatever is consumed, is converted into ferric iron. And this ferric iron forms ferric hydroxide and releases three protons. So thus contributing to further acidosis.